Hello everybody, and welcome to the Construct2 Academy Introduction to Physics Games. My name is Ed, and I'm going to give you a brief introduction to how easy it is to make physics games with the Construct2 game engine. The key learning points for this video will be the physics behavior, the fade behavior, and using families. Alright, let's get started. Hey, what's going on everybody? Ed here, bringing you another tutorial for the Construct2 Academy. Uh, today, a real brief overview on physics, um, just some real m small things you can do with the physics engine in Construct2. Um, Going to be recreating a, kind of a, a kill the pegs type of game, um, shooting the ball out of a gun at angles, and then it'll bounce off the pegs and destroy them as it hits them. So let's go ahead and get started. So I already have the layout set up. Um, basically, I have these three walls that will uh, keep the ball in play. Uh, I won't allow it to bounce up out of the layout. I have my ground that will destroy the ball when it falls to the bottom. Um, I have these couple of ramps on the sides. Uh, those will just be, you know, another obstacle or another uh, guide for the ball. And then we have these pegs. And you'll notice I have three different color pegs. Right now they all do the same thing. They're just different colors. Um, but I wanted to do three separate objects uh, because I wanted to do a brief introduction to families for you guys as well as physics in this tutorial. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and create a family to put all these pegs in. Uh, what a family will allow us to do is it will allow us to uh, a group uh, several objects that are similar in a family to which we can then access, add behaviors to a family, or uh, pick just a, a member of the family in our event sheet. So we're just going to right click on family here and say add family and we want to stick in our three pegs and we want to name this pegs all right at the same time since we have these two different ramps uh, let's go ahead and stick those in a family as well for the same reason and we'll call this ramps okay and then we have our ball here this is going to be our main our main uh, object of the game and we're going to start out with him by giving him the physics behavior. All right. And we want to set his uh, immovable. We want to stay as no, meaning he is going to move around the screen. He's not going to be static in one spot. Uh, gravity will affect him. We want to change his collision mass to a circle. Um, that will give us a, a smoother, a better physics feel as he bounces off stuff. Uh, prevent rotation will stay at no. Um, our density is going to be 0 0.5 and our friction is going to be 0 and our elasticity is going to be 0 0.8 he's going to be pretty bouncy and then these will stay at 0, 0, 1, no and initial state is going to be enabled so if we go ahead and start this right now he's just going to basically fall off the screen right through everything All right, but he is being uh, affected by physics now so the next thing is we want to have him react from these uh, pegs. So on our pegs here, uh, we're actually going to go to pegs and see we have these family behaviors options. So I'm going to go ahead and add physics to our pegs. Uh, so instead of having to add the physics behavior to each one of these objects, we can just add it to our family. Now you'll see if you click on these guys down here, uh, it still shows the, the behavior and then it has pegs in these brackets letting you know it's in a family. All right, so let's go back up here. Uh, these are yes to immovable, meaning they're not going to be affected by gravity. They're going to stay in place. We're also going to use a circular polygon on these guys. Our density is going to stay at 1. Our friction is going to be 0. And our elasticity is going to stay at 0.2. And everything else is going to stay the same. Okay, so now if we go ahead and run this, we should see our physics option or physics objects um, actually interacting with each other as you see by the bouncing ball. All right, so still not real exciting, but we are definitely getting to that. All right, so the next thing we want to go to our walls, and same thing, we want to add the physics behavior to our walls because the ball is going to react with them as well with physics. 
And again, these are going to be yes to immovable because we don't want gravity to affect them. We're going to use just our regular collision polys on these since they're not a circle. And we're going to do one zero and elasticity is going to be zero. Friction is going to stay the same. And everything else is going to stay the same there. And then lastly, we want to add physics to our ramps because those will al also interact with the ball via physics. Uh, again, yes to immovable, regular poly, and no elasticity on these either. Friction will stay at 0.5. Okay. So we won't run it now because basically we're going to see the same thing uh, we would have seen earlier. So let's go ahead and start some coding here. So the first thing we want to do, it's pretty boring with the ball just dropping. Okay, we have this gun up here that we want to be able to rotate and then it's going to shoot the ball out at different angles. So first off, let's destroy our ball that we have on our screen on the start of the layout. All right, and then let's go back here and add our, we need the keyboard for our inputs. So let's add that object real quick. And let's add a keyboard event for on key is down. We'll start with our left key. And what we wanna do with that is we wanna rotate our gun clockwise two degrees for every tick that I'm holding down that button. Okay, and same thing with our right arrow, except we want to rotate it, oops, we want to rotate it counterclockwise. So now if we run this, we can actually move our gun left and right. All right, now let's make this bad boy shoot. So keyboard on key pressed. We're going to use the space bar. We want him to gun. We want him to spawn another object. We want to spawn the ball on layer ball. Image point zero is fine. Okay. So right now, not much is going to happen. The ball is just going to kind of fall out and bounce around. So not not very exciting. All right, and we can also shoot out a whole bunch of balls, which we don't want to be able to do that either. So let's go ahead and fix that first. So let's add a global variable called can shoot. And we're going to default that to one, meaning yes, you can shoot. Okay. Uh, so we only want to be able to move the gun and uh, shoot if my uh, if I'm able to shoot. Okay, so let's add another condition here. Checking can shoot is equal to one. Okay. Okay. So now after we shoot. We want to set can shoot to zero. So we don't want to run this now because we have nothing setting can shoot back to one. So we would only get to shoot one time. All right. Um, but we also don't want the ball to just fall out of the gun like it did. So we want to go to our ball and you'll see all these physics options here. Okay. And what we want to do is we want to apply a force at an angle. So our force is going to be 100, and our angle is going to be the gun dot angle plus 90 degrees at image point zero. So we're going to be applying 100 force um, to whatever the angle of the gun is. So if the gun is here, it'll be at angle you know 50. But this is actually pointing to the right, so it's actually at zero. So that's why we need to add the 90 to that um, to make it shoot out right at the correct, the correct spot. So there we go. 
Now we can shoot our ball out and he bounces around. Let's not do that yet. Now that's all fun. Now what we need to do is get the pegs to disappear. Um, and you'll notice on each one of my pegs, uh, I have a frame one that is just a gray peg. Okay. And we want to add one more behavior to our pegs. We want to add the fade behavior. And we want to make it wait maybe five seconds and then have it fade out um, after that. And again, this is going to affect all of my pegs since it's on a family. Okay, now since all of these have the same frame one, what we can do is when the ball collides with a peg, Okay, we can take that peg, because it's picking the peg that got hit, alright, and we can set the frame to 1, since they're all the same. And also, we can go ahead and start the fade. Which reminds me real quick, we need to go over here to our pegs, and we need to turn this activate at start on the fade to no. Or also just all fade out as soon as we start. So if we go ahead and run this now, should be able to destroy some pegs. You'll see, they go ahead and sit there and wait five seconds and then they start to fade out. Okay, problem is we still only have one shot. Right, so what we want to do is when our ball collides with the ground, right, that's kind of our, our we lost a ball. First thing we want to do is go ahead and destroy the ball so it's not floating around in space. All right. And then we also we want to set can shoot back to 1. Because now we can go ahead and shoot again. And then lastly, I want to add a sub event here. Okay? And I want to look for pegs whose frames are 1. And then I want to just simply destroy them. So I'm going to pick all pegs with a frame of 1, and I'm going to destroy them. So that way there won't be any leftover gray frames, or gray pegs, when uh, after our ball hits the ground. So let's go ahead and test this out. So there's our ball bouncing around. we got some pegs fading out after a few seconds. And our, well, that was a really good shot. And you'll see all the other gray ones disappeared. And I can go ahead and shoot again. They disappear instantly. My ramps work. And this is why you want them to disappear because see how he's sitting there? Yeah, he would just sit there forever. So since they fade out, the ball's able to fall. Okay. And that's really the basics of creating a physics game. Obviously, there is so much more to the physics engine in Construct 2, but it shows you how simple it is to create a quick physics game just using the behaviors in Construct 2. Thank you, and I'll see you again in the next video.